Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. I'm feeling a little steampunky today. Okay, so I'm going to have a go today at creating another small bag sized or pocket sized um, journal. So the last one that I tried to do I made a complete mess of and ended up having to throw it away because I've ruined um, the integrity of the board underneath. So what I've done is I've cut um, three pieces of grey grunge board. This is 300 micro, sorry, 300, 3000 micron thick grunge board, about three millimetres. And I've cut it with the spine at 40 centimetres in inches in old money. That's probably around about one and a half inches wide. So it's not a very wide one. Um, and all I've done is I've just bound that with a little bit of masking tape to start off with. Now, um, the, the front covers are slightly larger than um, what we class in the UK as being a six. Um, but in the States, probably A2 sized. So fairly smallish, but a nice kind of size to use on the go. So those are the basic, um, the basic covers, the actual structure of the journal. I'll now um, go and grab the paper pad that I've purchased that I'm going to be using to decorate the covers of this journal. Hello, Mr. Booby. You come to say hello? Mr. Bentley's just come in for a quick say and hello, just nudge me and then he's going back to bed. Um, right, okay, so this is the paper pad that I've chosen um, to use to decorate the A6 or the A2 uh, notepad. So this is a scrapbooking pad um, from a company called Stamperia, based in Hungary. This is the first time I've ever purchased any papers from them. Um, it was fairly inexpensive as far as papers are concerned. It says 190. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure about that. I think it might be slightly lighter, slighter, slightly lighter weight. But anyway, so the designs are lovely. So very, very steampunky, which appealed to me completely and utterly. And what, me. And him and sat me. And him sat behind me working on his computer. Um, what appealed to me was actually you get two bonus sheets because on the they're all double-sided papers but on the back of the front cover which you would normally throw away is also a full sheet so that's a bit of a bonus but also when you go to the back sheet and turn it over they've also printed on that as well so you actually get two kind of bonus sheets in these paper pads which is kind of nice, which means that you can actually utilise the front cover, which you would normally have to discard. Like that, like that. Oh, and the telephone's ringing. So I shall be back in a moment. Apologies for that. I have to just go and answer the phone quickly. Anyway, as I was saying, so these are the papers. So the front and back covers also have bonus papers. So just a quick recap. Um, and. I'll just quickly flick through these papers as well. So this is the first one that's got some nice A6 sized or A2 sized kind of postcardies on the back and they've also got backs on them too. So they're perfect for like journaling cards to add into a journal or to use as decoration. Lovely little things to have like that. So the next one is a kind of globe map, Map of Monday. Again, a lovely kind of vintage style uh, background paper like that one balloons crackles paris it's got it all I like it like it and again that's the same damask kind of pattern that's on the inside front cover so actually you do get two of those because you've got the front cover as well and then you've got the sheet of clocks and dials and um, gears and cogs. That's smashing that one. Yes, I can think of, we can think of lots of uses for this sheet. On the back it's got dictionary pages, um, small dictionary pages with a nice kind of grungy distressed um, background to it and on this one you've got one called the time machine, a huge clock, nice kind of dials and things at the bottom. Again you've got that matching kind of um, pattern that's also on the back sheet. 
so that kind of matches quite nicely do like that one and then you've got some um, vintage style steampunky bikes clocks wings that kind of stuff on there like that one and again you've got a real kind of distressed damask um, all the way down with some text and typography showing through from underneath the layers I like that and I also like the colour um, combo on this one I don't know whether the camera's picking this up real but this is more of a um, like a copper oxide more of a verdigris colour love it and then we have that one which has got the trains the blueprints there is nothing like a dream to create the future and those stripes up the sides a nice kind of busy pattern paper there with that grunge on the edges and then we've got this one which is the stripes again with that grunge with the patination the copper oxide on there on this side it's upside down we've got more balloons more airships more crackle uh, and some nice frames and flourishes baroque elements in there as well and on this sheet we've got blueprints with cogs like that nice little hand scripty typography on the back you have a old map of the world an historic map of the world doesn't really show much that this is supposed to be Australia and New Zealand down here from what I can gather I'm not really sure what the language is well it says Medo Nord et Ocean something or other um, so I'm presuming this is kind of French ish but again it's got that nice kind of pale blue patination with the splats and all that kind of stuff on it and finally you have the sheets of tags so again we've got some real cool tags designs in there that can be used for journaling too and on the back as with the a6 a2 kind of journaling cards they also have distress backs to them as well so love that paper pad it like i said um i purchased mine from ebay uh, i didn't pay a huge amount for it um i paid less than 13 pounds for what's effectively 10 sheets but 20 designs because there's a different one in each one but you also get those two bonus ones with the front cover and the back cover so this is what I'm going to be using in this um, pocket or bag sized notebook that I'm going to be creating today okay so now you've had a look at the papers that I'm going to be using um, I'll also show you what I'm going to be using for the basic backgrounds um, on this journal. So I've got two pieces of black um, paper. They're not cardstock, it's actually paper. So this one is cut and I'll just lay it over, I'll lay the structure of the covers over the top. So you can see it's cut with a kind of equal border all the way around. The second piece is cut which is actually smaller than the inside or the, the dimensions of the covers. So what I intend to do is I intend to cover the entire of the journal in this black paper. Now to do that I've already gone ahead and stuck down my big wide double-sided sticky tape that I purchased from um, a local industrial sign manufacturer. Now I'll just show you the size of my double-sided tape for those that have never seen it. There you go. It's huge and it was very expensive for what it is. But anyway, this is what I like to use in my journals. It's extremely sticky. So that will go, um, front cover will stick down onto that. And then this, once I've folded those corners over, will then go over the inside or into the inside and cover the inside. So I'm gonna have a journal which is complete, or journal covers which are completely covered in black. I'm then going to cut up, or I have already cut up, um, the papers that I want to use to the right sizes to create some panels to stick over the top. So they're going to have um, some nice black, not matte black panels on the inside front covers and on the outside covers too. That's the plan. So, the first thing to do is to stick that black onto the front cover. Now the reason I haven't shown you um, cutting out the bits of paper and panels from the 12x12 paper is because watching somebody cut squares out of paper is not the most interesting of videos to watch. 
um, and obviously different sizes. If you're you know, in the US and you're doing an A2 sized one, the dimensions wouldn't make much difference to you anyway because they'd be slightly different to those in the UK that use A4 paper. Um, because A6 is a quarter of A4. That's the way it works here in strange land. Anyway, so I'm going to try and position this up the top of that so it's pretty much in the middle with an equal border all the way around. I'm hoping that's done it and then I'm going to just give it a little bit of a push and then just where those creases are I'm just going to run my bone, fold, bone folder so that they're picked up on that side too. Now to get some nice mitered corners I'm just going to use a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut at about 45 degree angle across but I'm going to leave a little bit I knew I should have got the bigger scissors I could have sworn I'd pick my big scissors up I did pick my big scissors up there you go and I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the edge there now that just helps and makes it a bit easier when you start folding things over now I know I've probably not got the right kind of um, mitre angle on this one because you know I'm doing everything I'm doing it by eye so what good rule is just leave a, a scissor width a scissor width is a good rule of thumb for the sizing okay so the first thing I'm going to do is just wrap around this bottom edge uh, and the way to do that is literally is just to lift up your cardstock so it grabs the end and then just fold it in like so okay now with a ruler or a bone folder see those little areas on the edge that we left we're just going to nip those in and the same again at that side just nip them in and then you'll see why we do that later on and then do the same thing at this side fold it over push down take your bone folder or your ruler just nip that edge in and nip that edge in and then when we come to do the larger longer side do the same thing again push down push down and you'll see you get some real nice neat corner edges without any kind of st bits sticking out doesn't matter that that's not perfect because it's going to be covered in a little while anyway so again do that rub and push rub and push and then you have a very nicely decorated front cover and at this point you gently with your bone folder or ruler just push through onto those creases now you can turn that over and just kind of start feeding that back on itself just go really gently and then just burnish those creases in it's best not to go too hard to start off with because otherwise you may end up cracking the paper so that is the outside front cover done in the black so I now want to stick that piece of black paper on the inside of the cover that's going to hide all those rough edges there now to do that I'm just going to use traditional well just ordinary kind of glue you can use PVA now the reason I'm not using my fantastic double-sided sticky tape is that if I would added that extra layer of the adhesive tape on the inside there then it would put stress on these um, creases just there so I'm going to just run the glue I 
around the edge in the middle make sure I get a little bit on the inside stop it from buckling that should do us Ooh. you can always just add that little bit there and then just with my finger I'm just going to rub that towards the edge Now this is the type of glue that does ball into a little bit of gum. That's just to make sure there we go that we get all the edge nicely covered. And this is also the type of glue that allows you to have a little bit of wiggle room when you do it. Flip that over and then drop it down and then I can position that just nicely on the inside and if any of it comes through I can just rub it and it comes straight off there we go so and again just gently push where those creases are. Just very, very easy. Like I said, if you get any glue on the cover, it just falls straight off. Just have to tease it a little bit just to get those creases in place. Gentle manipulation. So I'll carry on doing that until it's dry and then I'll be back. Okay, so my cover is completely covered. So just pop that to one side for a second and we're going to bring in the two pieces that I'm going to use, or the four pieces that I'm going to use for the front and back covers. So again, just using that glue I'm just going to add some little bits to the back. Flip it over and then centre that onto the pattern paper. So once you've actually created your journal, this bit really doesn't take long at all the decorating and then we've got my lady center her right in the middle little bit of wiggle room just to get it right and then flip it over and then you can add oops would help if I opened it hello Mr Bentley you come to tell me it's nearly dinner time. Okay, so there should be enough glue on there to do both the front and the back. So I'll bring in my covers. Just move that one out of the way a little bit. So this is going to be the back cover. So I can drop that one down just on there like that. And then this one will be the front cover. 
and I'll drop that one down and just center it. Make sure we've kind of got them lined up. That looks okay to me. And then we can flip it over and then start work on the inside front covers. So I've got two pieces cut from that, um, that 12 by 12 of the time machine. So I'm now going to keep forgetting that I've closed the glue up. Make sure I've got plenty, swap it over and of course obviously Whatever glue you prefer, white PVA, craft glue, water down a little bit, will work just as well, just as easy. I like this one because of that wiggle room that I get from it. Can't go wrong, go through gallons of the stuff. Okay, so bring that in, so that's the front. So this one wants to go on the left hand side. So I'm using the guide of the paper on the insert to line that up, make sure that I've got an even space all the way around, like so. I'm going to do the same thing at this side. Make sure I've got that even too. That's even on both sides. It looks a tad higher at that side, but I think that's a little bit of an optical illusion. We'll get in there. It's lovely. Right, I've also cut another strip of this, which would fit quite nicely down the inside there, but I don't want to add that just yet because I've still got to punch my holes for um, my signatures to go into. So literally, thank you Mr. Email, um, this project was just to get the covers decorated ready for doing the signatures for this. So we'll be doing the signatures on another day. Um, in the next few days, or within the next week anyway. So that is the front covers to the pocket journal and I will show you how I'm going to put um, or use some of the ephemera from that, some of the other tags, some of the other bits and pieces um, into the journal with the signatures once I've got those sorted. So that is just for starters. Part one, end of part one as they say. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.